Psalms 119. Aleph. This, psalm, this part of Aleph is a blessing when you obey the word. Blessed are the undefiled. That means you're not filthy. You're not polluted. You're not defiled. You're clean. If you are in wickedness, you are in your sin, you're not going to be blessed. Blessed means happy. When when Leah gives birth, I believe it's Gad, I'm not sure if you have to go back and check in Genesis. When she gives birth to one of her boys there, she says, happy is the man. Happy will they say of me. And then she called his name, I, like I said, I believe it's Gad. The Bible it has its own dictionary. If you're not happy in your Christian walk, you may be defiled. Blessed are they, blessed are the undefiled in the way. Well, Jesus said, I am the way. Who walk in the law of the Lord. Old Testament book, Old Testament, under the law. But even for a born again Christian, the law is good. We're not saved by the law, but it'd be very good for you to be happy if you obey, thou shalt not kill. It'll keep you in fellowship with God. When you go outside the law and things written in the law that are wrong and you shouldn't do, when God says, listen, this is wrong. I am displeased with this, no matter what dispensation you are in. Now, I am not saying you're saved by the law, but I'm saying, listen, when God says sodomy is an abomination, that he, just because we're under grace doesn't mean God, okay, I approve of, of sodomy now. That's not the case. Like when you see printing marks, tattoos, and, and, and putting all these things that people put on, you know, various places on their body. Well, what's the Old Testament? Yeah, but still, okay, I'm not saved by a tattoo. I am not saved by an earring. I can come across a Christian who has a tattoo and who does have a a, a, a piercing. All right, they're saved. They're born again Christian. They're just as saved as I am, even though that violates the law. But if you obey the law, you be clean. And if you did get saved afterwards, you know now, now you got an embarrassment. When the law states thou shalt not covet, it's a great thing not to covet. Keeps your checkbook in balance. It keeps your life in balance. And then when you read things like, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, you'll understand the meaning when you don't covet. Well, that means I shall not want a Corvette, I shall not want a mansion and all that. I mean, I shall not want the things I need. So, under the law, under the Old Testament, you are saved by what the law provided you. Things you were not to do and things you were to do. Under grace, as a born-again Christian, it is proper. Listen, Paul quotes nine of the Ten Commandments. The only commandment Paul does not uh, mention is the Sabbath. Is a Christian to keep the law? Yes, but not for salvation. Now, would I go out and build a battlement around my roof? Well, I don't plan on having anybody work on my roof. But then again, when you read the Old Testament, life were on the housetop. Where was Peter? He was on the housetop praying one night, and he saw that vision. We don't go up on a rooftop. In our home. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies. And Lord willing, as we go into this chapter, we're going to look at some of these words. I didn't want to break them down or yet. Because these are going to come up. And testimony and law. And words we're going to see to end this under Olive is words that describe the word. 
So a blessing would be obeying the word. A blessing would be obeying the testimonies. And we'll try to break those words down later, Lord willing. And that seek him with a whole heart, not half heart. You got to want the Lord for everything. You can't hold nothing back. You hold something back, then that whatever you're holding back is not God, it's you. Jesus said with your whole heart, with your whole mind, with your whole, whole, entire. Um, I believe when Tracy and I were, were kids, there was a place you used, used to call the whole donut. And then you get a donut that had a hole in it. It wasn't a whole donut. It was a holy donut. And that's what Christians, no, that's what Christians try to do. They try to give God this, this little thing with a hole in it. And that's not whole. And then they turn around and sell you the hole. They do it today. They pop the hole out and try to charge you for the hole that belongs in your donut. I want the whole donut. I don't want the donut hole. They also do iniquity. They also, oh, excuse me, they take that. That's a big difference, leaving that word out. They also do no iniquity. Well, you take one word out of the Bible and look what happens. That's the danger of taking a word out of the Bible. They walk in his ways. That's God. Who are blessed? Those who are undefiled. They keep the testimonies. They seek him with a whole heart. They do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. And they walk in the law of the Lord. Do, 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 do. You see all the works there? You know how I'm blessed in the Lord today? By the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, I don't have my righteousness. I have Christ's righteousness. I didn't do nothing. If you want to put yourself in your church under the law, go ahead. you got to do all these things we're talking about. I can't do them. These are works. These are works that if you can do, can save you. Are you undefiled? Yes, you are. Bible says in the Old Testament, Solomon wrote, For all have sinned and come to the shore of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. All right. What are you going to do with your works with that one? You can't even get by the first verse of Psalm 119, which is all about the Word of God. Psalm 119, the longest chapter in the Bible, is about the Word of God. Who walk in the Lord, who walk in the law of the Lord. Can you walk in the law? No, you can't. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies. Can you keep the testimonies of the Lord? Can you keep his word? You mean you, you memorize from Genesis 1 to Revelation 22. Keep his testimony. That seek him with a whole heart. I mean, have you gone after God entirely in your life and forsook everything? You dropped your sins right away. All of them. You dropped them. You know, when you relish in whatever sin you are in, you have left God for your lust. They also do no iniquity. Have you done none, no iniquity? They walk in his ways all the time, every time. You know, in the book of Pilgrim's Progress, you didn't try to take a shortcut. You know, cut through the mellow. Thou has commanded us, God has commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Let me mark here. Isn't it? I'm a Bible marker. And I mark the pronouns of God. Precepts. We'll look at this word. Is a command or order to moralness. And this is where you would find the Ten Commandments. Your moral activity. 
diligently means uh, uh, you are actively searching and properly to do right, the right way. You can't even get by the first commandment which says God is first. I mean, before you wake up and open up your eyes, you are putting your mind in your heart, whole heart, whole heart, whole heart. Before you wake up, you are putting your whole heart in your mind is, I'm going to open up my eyes and praise God to the fullest. Come on. Come on. You're going to keep the law of God first. That means first thing in the morning, the first thing you do, absolutely the, the first of all first that you do. Your mind and your heart is set upon God as soon as you wake up. That means your heart and mind has got to be on God even before you wake up. Now, I can go through all Ten Commandments, but I'm not going to. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Sound like he's, he's a little flumbled. <laughs> Is God your direction? You know, Christians have a director today. And it's in Hollywood. Christian, Christian film is coming out left and right out of Hollywood. And for to make a movie, you gotta you gotta have a director. And all these films have been against the teaching and against the words of the Bible. And from what I've been told, I'm not gonna waste my money. I'm gonna waste my time. That this movie that Noah came out had nothing to do with the Bible, but it was man's interpretation of the Bible. There are movies out there about the tribulation where Gentiles get saved and overcome the mark of the beast. Now, that's not what the Bible says. And whatever Hollywood, I haven't seen all the Hollywood Bible movies. I don't plan on to. Then, all right. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statues. All right. If I can keep your statues, God, then shall I not be ashamed. Every born again Christian, bring this to the, to the Christian. Every born again Christian is going to be some way somehow ashamed of the judgment seat of Christ. There's going to be an unconfessed sin in our life somewhere. And if we would have been directed by God to keep his statutes, that's a law. Not for salvation. Imagine how many Christian born again men are going to be charged with adultery. And they're going to sit there with their jaw open to the ground, holding their wife's hand of a marriage of 20, 30 years, and say, I never honestly stepped out of my way. But what does the word say? What does Jesus say? If a man look upon a woman to lust after her in his heart, he has already... Isn't that the word of God? That's why the Jehovah Witnesses don't want Jesus to be God. Because then his words would be the Bible. And since Jesus is God, everything that you got a red letter Bible is God's word. And when he says you look upon a woman to lust after her in your heart, you have committed adultery with her. And had you learned the Ten Commandments, had you realized you would be held accountable for the law and for what God has taught in his word, even though it's not a salvation for us, that you will be held accountable, you will be ashamed if it's not under the blood. 
You don't need to go join another woman that, to be charged with adultery. I wonder how many Sunday schools today teach children how to honor their parents. That is one of the commandments that is carried over to, uh, I believe it's Ephesians. And Paul quotes it word for word and tells you that if you don't honor your parents, you can have a shortened lifespan. Had children been directed in Sunday school and the public school system on what it means to honor thy father and honor thy mother, thou shalt not be ashamed. We live in a shameful era of America of in the churches. Listen, don't think just because you send your child to a Christian school, they're going to have good morale and good conduct. No. Satan's there too. Matter of fact, Satan's more there because he doesn't want your children to come out as Christians. So to be not a shame as a Christian. Imagine you know, you're at work, you're around your boss, you're around your co-workers, and you're doing your job, and then you got caught in a lie that you told. Now you're ashamed. Had you learned about a false witness, had you known, oh, I don't have to follow the Ten Commandments, I'm sad. Yeah, but the false witness, you told a lie. Now everybody knows you as a lying Christian. How many lying Christians are there out there that are known? Every tenth person I deal with, they will mention a preacher or somebody that they were with in church that, yes, okay. And then most of the excuses are the hypocrites in the church. True. But there are hypocrites at the restaurant. Obeying God's statutes will keep you from being ashamed. When I have respect unto all thy commandments, do you respect what God has told you to do? All right, let's talk about a Christian. Well, let's talk about a commandment. Oh, the Big Ten. I got another one. You, you want one to respect? Respect means to study, to show interest, to do, to lift up in honor. Respect is, well, it used to be a time when a woman, you, you come in a room and all the chairs were set down, I mean, all the chairs were taken, a woman enters through the door, and you, as a man, you got up and gave the seat to a woman. That was respect. You, I had to bow my head, or give my hand and handshake, or take off my hat to an elderly person in respect. With that to God, have you respect unto all thy commands? What is a commandment of, for a Christian given? Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. Have you studied to perform that? Have you done what God has told you to do? Love thy neighbor as thyself. That's a commandment by Jesus Christ. The apostles sat in the book of Acts for the Gentile. Don't don't avoid yourself and uh, don't avow yourself in fornication. Don't eat things that are strangled. There's a list there, a short list of things that a Gentile shouldn't do is saved. Paul gives lengthy lists of all sins. John gives a lengthy list of sins that are not going to be in New Jerusalem. Have you respected what God has said? I will praise thee with uprightness of heart. There's the heart again. For with the heart man believes in righteousness. Or are you just in church just giving lip service, just singing with your lips? Are you giving, uh, uh, you know, let's pray. And you're not there. Not every church service as a Christian are you there in the church service. Your mind is somewhere else. Your attitude is somewhere else.
But have you given God the praise with a holy, upright heart, whole heart, to what we learn? When I have learned thy righteous judgment. When you go reading through the Bible and you realize the judgment that God places upon man. The attitude of the world, oh, what a wicked God you have. No, it's because of sinful man. That those things that happen. What's worse, one of the judgments that if you long to study about the life of Jesus, the last day he had on this planet, you study the judgment that came upon him. Thou shalt not leave my soul in hell, or thou shalt see the Holy One with corruption, we read tonight. And then you get preachers out there say, Jesus didn't go to hell. Well, where are our sins? Where does a sinner go who is not washed in the blood? Well, how did he get to... can't say that word, can I? I don't want to offend anybody. Well, how in the hell did they get in hell? They yeah, threw it in there. Got in there twice. How do you go to hell? Your sin. You can't get out of hell unless Jesus washes you from your sins. God is a holy, righteous judge. You are not. You are a human of all capability of sin. You can turn around on God, turn your back on God, and say, well, that's not right. Because you've got some personal motive in it. You can't think holy. I questioned God the other night, or yesterday I think it was. God, why did you put nerves in tooth? Why would you do such a thing? I was like Job, I blame God. I'm like Bible characters in the Bible. I blame God. And then I realized, wait a minute. God did not do that. Sin did that. When we rebelled against God and took that fruit that God told us not to take, then our body was transformed into suffering and pain. It's not God's fault. Had Adam taken that tree of life, God would have bared him or barred him from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and we'd be all living in like we were, like we're going to be in Revelation 21 and 22. I will keep thy statutes. Can you say that? Or do you nitpick? Now, for an Old Testament saint, I mean, he had to keep them. There were certain sins that there was no remedy. There was no, absolutely no offering. Adultery and murder. I was, I'm wondering, how about for the guy that had leprosy? He couldn't come into the city. He couldn't come into the tabernacle to offer an animal. He was unclean. Yet in the Old Testament, only one guy that had leprosy was healed of it, and that was a Gentile named Naaman. Oh forsake, oh, forsake me not utterly. If you did not obey the law, if you did not do what the, the law told you to do, God would forsake you, and the words you would find would be cast out. 
And what did Jesus say about cast out? Cast them out into outer darkness where there'll be gnashing and wailing of teeth. It's It's about the word. God's word said, do not eat of that fruit. And we, we disobeyed. God said, get in the ark. And man disobeyed. God said, here is a law. For my people, a nation, to rule and govern by, to be a particular, to be a special people, to be a holy people. And they disobeyed. God sent his son who is God. Sinless. 100% perfect who obeyed the entire law. And they crucified him. God said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Okay, now that you're saved, follow my law. Follow what is good and right and just. Paul says, seek that which is good. And he goes on. And keep. I find nothing wrong where it says thou shalt have no idols. I find nothing wrong with the Ten Commandments. I find nothing wrong with, with the things in the law. But I'm given liberty where I can eat lobster and pork, which is a law. But if you read about pork and study it and realize that some human beings, and not all, have a particular problem with pork products, From the little story that I read and did a sermon about cockroaches, I know a cockroach by the, the, by the liberty and the life that he has and where he comes from. He's not a particular animal that you would enjoy eating. And I guarantee somewhere in that list, he's in the list of unclean. But you can go down, the Bible says, down to McDonald's and get yourself a McLocus. John the Baptist had McLocus with honey. McHoney. There are things that are healthy and there are things that are right in the law. And the law was given by God on Mount Sinai, Exodus 20. And written down with his own finger. The same finger that wrote down on the ground when a woman was brought to Jesus uh, about adultery. Do you know that that was the same finger that wrote on those ten things that Moses broke in one afternoon? Coming down in a mountain into a valley, he broke all ten commandments in one shot. Now, about the Word of God and that, just a little funny little side note here. If men are interested in the originals, why don't they go find the original pieces that Moses broke? You know, it was never read that it discarded. It was never read that what, anything was done to them. They're probably over there right now if you want the originals. And some stupid Catholic will find them and put them in as a relic in a church somewhere. That's why they're not found. We open the longest chapter in the Bible, Psalm 119, with the word. And the entire chapter is about the word. Because God's word is going to be forever settled in heaven. And the shortest verse that we did the other night was about thanksgiving to God. 
The long and short of it all is about the word of God and being thankful. That's the long and short of life. Revelation 4 where it says, and this is thou, was, I forget what verse. Now, closing. What would you know about anything if you didn't have the Bible? God did not put it down in writing. What would you not know? But how many books come from the Bible? Even perverted Bibles. How many? How many times in a movie or a television program is the Bible quoted? Of all the field of written works of man, how much of it has the Bible? The stories of the Bible come. Story of Bathsheba and David. Well, they just change the names, protect the names. You know, thing, the things of this movie are, are not actual events. You know, we change the name to protect you know, the innocent. You know, the, the, the princess is being held by captive by a dragon, and here comes her prince in shiny and a white. Where did that come from? Oh, here, here's a movie about a man suffering. He's got all kinds of problems. Wife left him. Children are gone. All his possessions. And where did that come from? Here's this poor little boy. He's lame in his feet. And he's living down in a junky, raunchy little place. And out comes someone who lifts him up and gives him a brand new mansion. Where did that come from? Oh, we may change the story make it be a little girl in an orphanage. And, you know... They all come out of the Bible, the Word of God, the focus that tells us about God and what is the most unread. Jesus never had the Holy Bible as we have in our laps. Paul could not have the, the Bible that we hold in our laps because he was still writing the thing. And then when he wrote the Bible, he sent it off to a church. And then he lost his Bible, unless he had a carbon copy, which I don't think he did. You imagine David fumbling around, where's my Psalm 146? Oh, where's my, oh man, I don't got my, where did I do that song? Where's the song? I want that song. He didn't couldn't open in the book and say, okay, so um, all right, so I'm, oh, yeah, yeah, Psalm 28, right to Psalm 27. Hey, I wrote Psalm 27 too. Hey, I wrote Psalm 29. Hey, I wrote Psalm 26. He didn't have that. Adam and Eve could not look at Genesis 3 and see what the results would have been. We know. And we know because God preserved it, God inspired it, and here it is, and men mess with it. Blessing by obeying the word. Now, what do you think somebody will get when they change the word? Have you read the places where it says about adding and subtracting? You want to ask Eve about Bible correction? That first time she started giving birth, you think she was pleased in changing the Bible? It's all about God. And it's so important that John 1 says that Jesus is the Word. And the Word is Jesus. So we're studying the Lord Jesus Christ. What have we learned so far? Jesus did exactly what these eight chapters, eight verses did. He did them all, 100%. This book is divided into the alphabet, the Jewish, eight verses each. Eight is a, is a number of new beginning. And I think it's going to take us 21 days to do it. I think 21. I'll have to check on that one. If it's 21, it's 7 plus 7 plus 7. I may be... I may be wrong in that one. As we close now in Psalm 119, and we're going to be in it 
And the first alphabet letter was learned. And I could be wrong about this. I'm wrong on many things, but Aleph. O L I V E F is the is the sounding of A L E P H. Aleph. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds Thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, Thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee, how great Thou art. How great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in That on the cross My burden gladly bearing He bled and died To take away my sin Then sings my soul My Savior God to thee How great thou art How great thou art Sings my soul, my Savior God.